ಅದೇ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ರಾಜಯೋಗ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪವರ್ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ಅರ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಟು ದ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಪ್ರಪೌಂಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಮೈಟ್ ಹವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾತಂಜಲ ಯೋಗ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೂತ್ರಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಫಾರಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ವೆನ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಯೋಗ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ದೇ ರೆಫರ್ ಟು ಪಾತಂಜಲ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಗೆವಿತಿ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ರಾಜ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗಾಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ಯೋಗ ಚಿತ್ತ ವೃತ್ತಿ ನಿರೋಧ ಯೋಗ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಏಟ್ ಲಿಂಬಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಯಮ ನಿಯಮ ಆಸನ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಾಹಾರ ಧಾರಣ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯಮ ನಿಯಮ ಆಸನ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಾಹಾರ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಬಹಿರಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಬಹಿರಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಧಾರಣ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಸಮಾಧಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂತರಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಆರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದ ಕಲ್ಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಆರ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ದಿ ಪಾತಂಜಲ ಯೋಗ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಯಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಿಯಮ ವಿಚ್ ಅಸೆನ್ಷಲಿ ಆರ್ ಅವರ್ ಎಥಿಕಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾರಲ್ ಕೋಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಹಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಟುಡೇ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ದ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ಐ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಯು ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಇದು ಏಟ್ ಲಿಂಬಿಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಕಲ್ಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಬಟ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಬಹಿರಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಯಮ ನಿಯಮ ಆಸನ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಾಹಾರ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಯಮ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೂ ನಿಯಮ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೂಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೂಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿ ಅವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿ ಅವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಿ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾಲೋ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ರೂಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಅವಾಯ್ಡ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪತ್ನಿಲಿ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಲಿ ಎ ಎಥಿಕಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾರಲ್ ಕೋಡ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಪುಟ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಬೈ ಗೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಲಿಮ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಬ್ರೆತ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಬೈ ಗೈನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಓವರ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಾಹಾರ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಇನ್ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ವೇಸ್ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಡನ್ ಬೈ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ ಧಾರಣ ಇಸ್ ಫೋಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್
Patanjali defines what are these yamas. Naturally, a question comes when you say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Is yama not contrary to freedom? Are we not curbing the freedom? So it is here that Patanjali makes a point. Freedom is not free flow of the senses. It is not free flow of the mind in whatever direction it wants. We would rather call them as slaves to the senses, slaves to our mind. So mastery over mind is what should be called as freedom. Then how do we get this mastery? Patanjali prescribes moderation. And gradual and systematic way would help us to gain mastery over the mind, mastery over the senses. We need to remove excesses, eliminate unnecessary aspects and finally realize that the lies are not necessary. Then Patanjali is a great psychologist. He tells if to a child go on telling don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, then gradually it may get suppressed and the child if it is rebellious it may start bursting out. Or suppression can lead to many many problems. Therefore, Patali said, okay, you have to do certain things to promote gaining mastery over the mind. What are those do's? They are called niyamas. A set of do's. And therefore, yama and niyama put together can bring the full approach to gain mastery over the mind. What are those niyamas? Cleanliness, satisfaction, penance, self-analysis, surrender to reality. Shaucha, santosha, tapas, swadhyaya, ishwara pranidhana. The five niyamas. Cleanliness, cleanliness outside, cleanliness inside. Yoga prescribed cleaning of our inner tract by what are called kriyas, special cleansing techniques that are available to us, developed by Hatha Yoga, later on by the Hatha Yogis. Satisfaction, that satisfaction is santosha and penance. Penance is not that you have to go to a river, stand on one leg and do no? penance. Penance is the process of completion of any work that we have taken. Now we have taken up this course. Until the course is finished, come what may I am going to see that the course is finished. That becomes a penance. Self-analysis, introspection, looking at ourselves. Invariably we blame others for all that happens to us. Oh, my wife is so terrible. And the women say, no, husband is horrible. And the children are very naughty. The atmosphere is dirty. And full of corruption. Always we blame others, others, others. And yoga says, why don't you look inside whether there is something wrong in you? Self-analysis. Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya. And finally, surrender to the Ishwara. Surrender to reality. Ishwara is the concept given by Patanjali as a person having all knowledge. Who is the purest personality, we can call. So in more generalized scientific terminology, he calls it as a field of consciousness. The Ananda Mayakosha. The field of bliss or eternity beyond that. That is the one. Surrender to that helps us to expand our personality. What is surrender? Surrender is tuning. Just like we tune our radio or a TV to a particular station. Tune your mind to that infinity. Then all the powers is going to come up, he says. Now, how to practice Yama and Nema? Not with the use of a great will or force, that is the trick in yoga. Nahatat, Nabalat. Any practice you do, don't do with a great willpower and great force. Do it intelligently. Do it subtly. Do it 
you know, slow and steady wins the race, is very true in yoga. Do it little by little, little by little. You know? Shanaihi, Shanaihi, Uparami is said. And this helps us to grow. And yet another contribution of Patanjali is to tell us that you can choose any one of them, any one of the niyamas or yamas, and carry it to the end, it can reach you to the highest stage of mastery over the mind. No? It is said that contentment itself can be a great tool to reach the highest levels of perfection. Santoshat Anuttama Sukhalabaha said. And there were the great teachers of yoga, Naka and Mayudgalya. No? They reached the highest by self-analysis and penance. Swadhyaya pravachane eveti nako mudgalyaha. That's how they've been put forth, the Upanishad. All are paths to the same goal. Santosha, to be happy all the time, is a wonder tool. If I want to say that we want to practice yoga, the best form of yoga is to practice Santosha. To be happy all the time. Why? What is the basis? for being happy because we are basically ananda, we are bliss originally, we are all made of that ananda, that bliss, therefore why not be happy all the time, things will come and go, things will come and go. So to be happy all the time alone can reach you to the highest goal, and that helps us to spread the fragrance of love and bliss and ananda to everyone in the society, the society can highly grow, always be happy and cheerful. So look at the broad basis that Patanjali is giving us. Not to think that yoga is only some sort of physical postures. So this is what we need to provide in an atmosphere. An atmosphere in which people will be very happy and wonderfully contented and mind very, very calm. And such people can reach heights at a very fast rate. Now, the third is asana. In this, we have the yama, niyama, do's and don'ts, ethics and morality, asanas, pranayama, pratyahara. They all lead to the same goal, that is, Patanjali calls it swarupa, our original state. What is that original state yesterday we saw? Eternity beyond space time causation. It is a state of absolute bliss. It is a state of total freedom. Freedom from all miseries. Freedom from all tensions and stresses. Freedom from diseases. Freedom from mental slavery, emotional slavery, intellectual ignorance and conflicts. And that is a state of total knowledge and total power. So each one of us can reach this state if you follow this yama or niyama. Now we come the asana way. Asanas are postures of the body, the third limb of Patanjali. And they are called Yogasanas. Well, what is the purpose of asanas? Asanas use the body to gain health and to gain mastery over the mind. So the purpose of asanas is quite different from physical exercises. Physical exercises are essentially to do the workouts, maybe to reduce the weight, to gain to some extent health by so doing. But the purpose of yogic postures is for chitta vritti nirodha, is to gain mastery over the mind. And what is the whole mechanism by which asanas work? They work by stretch and relax, stretch and relax different groups of muscles. A side bending posture, you know, you are stretching the left waist muscles and the left arm muscles, you know, then you come back. When you come back, you are relaxing the muscles. There are a large number of asanas which can help us to systematically stretch and relax, stretch and relax all groups of muscles in the body. By so doing, we will be able to make our muscle fibers more elastic and thereby we are more relaxed. 
and we learn to work with a very light body, with a relaxed body. So the yogasanas are classified as standing postures, sitting postures, prone and supine postures. Supine postures are the postures which are lying down on the back doing the postures. Prone is lying on the abdomen. This is one classification of the asanas. Come to the other next. And this is a combination of different postures which is used known as the sun salute, Surya Namaskar. When you cannot do any other asana, when you don't want to do one Surya Namaskar, no? itself will do. Nine steps. There is another thing in which you have the twelve steps as well. Surya Namaskar is a very, very popular thing which combines different postures. These are the standing postures. In all these postures, you can see that the spine is involved. A front bending, a back bending. A bending to the right, bending to the left. And the twist. These are three fundamental movements that are involved in all asanas. Compared to the exercises, the speciality is that always the spine is the one that is brought into operation. You could say. One of the three movements are in court. So these are the examples of the standing postures. Then we have the sitting postures. The front bending, front bending, back bending. It's called Paschimatanasana, Shashankasana, then Supta Vajrasana. Simple stand, sitting, Vajrasana. Very good for digestion. This is the only asana which can be done after food. And this is a twist, Arthamatsendrasana. Then we have the other twist postures which you could see here, little more complicated than the others. And this is extremely good for reducing the weight and abdominal girth. Then we have the prone postures in which you lie down on the abdomen and do the practice. This is a simple cobra pose called Bhujangasana. And this is the Dhanurasana, like a bow. Then we have the Shalabhasana, Ekapada Shalabhasana, called the locust post. Then with both the legs, full locust. Then we have the Dhanurasana, Hamsasana, the peacock. Then you come to the lying down, Shavasana. Shavasana is the one which is most relaxing. After all asanas, finally we end with Shavasana to give you very deep relaxation. Well, this is one classification. But there is another classification of the asanas and they are classified as relaxation postures, meditative postures and cultural postures. For example, relaxation postures, lying down on Shavasana. And the prone posture do Makarasana, crocodile postures. They are called relaxing postures. By the very definition of the asanas, lying down that way helps us to relax. Some postures are very congenial for doing meditation. They are sitting in Vajrasana, Padmasana, Sukhasana, Swastikasana. They help to keep the spine straight and thereby keeps us awake. Therefore, they are called meditative postures. All the remaining postures are called cultural postures. To culture our personality, to bring about a change in our personality. And therefore, in this classification, the asanas are classified differently. And these cultural postures could be used very effectively to change our behavioral pattern. Then we continuously can grow in yoga asanas, going deeper and deeper. Stages in asanas. Initially you make the asana stable called sthira. Then you keep it steadily for longer and longer duration. And then relax the body and go to the stage of blissfulness. Same asana you will be very very happy. Patanjali gives a sutra 
ప్రయత్న శైథిల్య అనంత సమాపత్తి భ్యామ్ వాడి సెస్ ఇస్ యు రిలాక్స్ ఇన్ ది ఫైనల్ ఆసన యూ గోన్ టు ది అర్ధ కడి చక్ర ఆసన ఇన్ ది ఫైనల్ పోస్టర్ క్లోజ్ యువర్ ఐస్ అండ్ కంప్లీట్ ఐ రిలాక్స్ ఆల్ పార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ద బాడీ దెన్ ఇమాజిన్ ఎ వాస్ట్ ఇన్ఫైనెట్ స్కై అనంత సమాపత్తి అండ్ ట్యూన్ ద మైండ్ టు దట్ ఇన్ఫైనెట్ ఎక్స్పాన్స్ బిఫోర్ యూ కమ్ బ్యాక్ యు నో వెరీ సింపుల్ థింగ్ విచ్ కెన్ హెల్ప్ to gain mastery over the mind. So, the difference between exercises and the asanas is very evident now. Exercises work with jerks and speed and repetitions and they work essentially at the muscular level, cardiovascular and respiratory levels. Whereas yoga asanas, you know, they are slow, maintained for longer time mention and spine is involved. therefore the nervous system is involved endocrine system is involved the brain and the mind are all involved so asanas are a step after yogic postures that's why in the united states people have started taking from exercise to the next then we come to pranayama the fourth limb of the ashtanga yoga pranasya ayamaha pranayamaha the word pranayama has two things prana and ayama and ayama is to gain mastery gaining mastery over prana by gaining control mastery over the breathing now through the breathing you go to the prana and gain mastery over the prana prana and mind are two faces of the same coin control the prana mind is control pranayama initially starts with cleansing of the respiratory system they are called kriyas thanks to swami ramdev Kapalabhati has become very, very famous. In people have started practicing Kapalabhati, the cleansing, in millions all over the world. Kapalabhati is a contribution of Hatha Yoga, which he uses profusely to cleanse. It is the fast breathing technique. The fast breathing will wash away the carbon dioxide and increase the oxygen concentration in the blood, thereby purifying the blood. it stimulates the brain cells and invigorate the cells the tamas is removed but then we have the sectional breathing to normalize our breathing rate then we come to pranayama pranayama is featured by slowing up breath and balancing up breath how do we normalize the breath the correction has to be done in wrong breathing what is wrong breathing many times we have wrong habit when we breathe in abdomen should come forward but we do it reverse no breathe in taking the abdomen inside breathe out take the abdomen forward wrong sir you have to change this is the first thing we have to correct when we do the breathing practices and for that we have got a simple technique called abdominal breathing called udarshwasa when you breathe in consciously move the abdomen forward and when you breathe out slowly suck the abdomen inwards and breathe out all of us can check what is happening to our breathing whether we have wrong breathing then let's correct that when we look at children asthma patients invariably there is a wrong breathing going on correct the wrong breathing and things will happen and almost 60% of the people you know, get the benefit thoracic breathing helps to expand our vital capacity of the lungs and clavicular breathing brings the upper lobe of the lungs to operation and ultimately when we go on practicing it we have the full yogic breathing starting with abdominal breathing thoracic and upper clavicular breathing that helps us to make our breathing normal then we go to the pranayama pranayama is to slow down the breath so various techniques of pranayama are available to make our breath slower and slower the easiest of the pranayama is called sulabha pranayam no in which you can sit you can stand you can be walking you can be driving you can be doing anything but you can do pranayama what is that sulabha pranayam very simple take a deep breath and slowly breathe out go on doing it while you are driving no you can do that when you are tense start doing sulabha pranayam it will work wonders when you are stressed up you can do when you have a lot of pain 
take a deep breath. So they breathe out. When your mind is very confused, going very fast, no, slow down. The Sarva Pranayam can work wonders. Then we have to balance the breath between the two nostrils. There's a big size behind flow of prana through the left or the right. And to balance that, we have got Nadi Shuddhi Pranayam, also known as Anulom Vilom Pranayam, in which we breathe out through the left, breathe in through the left, breathe out through the right, breathe in through the right. <coughs> Ujjayi Pranayam helps to slow down the breath by partial contraction of the glottis. Shitali Sitkari Sadanta Pranayam, in which you fold the tongue and suck the air through the tongue. That's called Shitali. Fold the tongue, suck the air from the side, called Sitkari. And clench the teeth, going through the crevices of the teeth. That is the Sadanta Pranayam. And in Brahmari, you produce the humming sound of a breeze. Feel the wonderful resonance throughout the body. Gives a wonderful internal massaging. And these are the fundamental basic pranayama techniques we use profusely, which can bring great control or prana. And this is the normal position in which people sit and do the practices. Then we come to the fifth name called Pratyahara. Pratyahara is to use the senses to gain mastery over the mind. How do we do that? Control the senses from their rush towards the object. And this is called Pratyahara. Many people think that controlling should not be done because it may lead to suppression. Therefore Sigmund Freud said, give free vent to your desires, to your senses. Never try to control. But we know what happened. Giving free vent has led to license. Freedom has led to license. Therefore, Pratyahara is a very special practice. That very special practice is called Pratyahara. The challenge, one side if you try to control the senses rushing towards the object, you lead to suppression. If you give free vent, again it leads to license and it's hazards. What is the way out? Pratyahara. Pratyahara is sublimation. And what characterizes sublimation is a very interesting thing that Patanjali says. Sublimation of desires and not suppression. Sublimation is featured by slowness. Normally, we are generating energy within. And if you try to block it, the energy is suppressed there. If you give free vent, it will burst out. What is to be done? You must control your basic energy production. No? Control. No? So you do at the senses level by telling the senses, no, no, don't rush. Calm down, calm down. Don't be fast, don't be fast. This is called a, the Prati Ahara. Then we come to Antaranga Yoga, the direct control over the mind. This is very important. You must understand what is mind. While the modern science talks about functioning of the brain as mind, yoga tells us that mind is a conglomeration of thoughts and it's a collection of thoughts. Yoga is to gain mastery over the mind as we saw. And how do we bring control and mastery over the thoughts? Let's understand the various phases of the mind. The grossest phase of the mind is a random mind called chanchalata. The mind jumping from one subject to another. The monkey mind we are all very familiar. So this is the grossest phase of the mind. All energy is just wasted in the encounter. So what do we do? In our entire education system, we are trying to develop the power of concentration. More and more concentration. This is called Ekagrata. Ekagrata is gaining capacity to put the mind on a single subject. When we are trying to understand now, the mind is totally in the subject that I am talking about. If on the other hand, in between, you start thinking about your house, about your accommodation, about how long you are going to be there, about your job and others, mind has come down to chanchalata. And all through our education, we are trying to develop this power of concentration. And we all know how useful and how effective, how beneficial it is to have concentration. It is mandatory for all success. How do we do? Essentially, when you look at 
the methodology by which we develop concentration, there are two ways. One is the conventional, the traditional way, in which you try to bring the mind with force, by imposition, by force, by habituation. The child doesn't want to sit a point. Father and mother goes there and come on, sit, you have to write, you have no choice, go on doing it. But the child wants to run away. Again you pull, go on doing it again and again. After some time, the child realizes, I have no choice, I have to write, let me quickly write and then run away. You know, This is one way. But we all are aware of the wonderful Montessori system of education. Learn while you play. You know? We don't say that you come here for the school to learn. You come here for play, play schools. You know? And develop various modalities of play, gadgets. And in the process of learning, the children learn tremendously. And this is the second dimension, the easy way you enjoy while you're learning. So if you don't have concentration, the best thing is that start liking the subject. Then miracles occur. From there we go to the next step called dharana. Up to concentration we are all very familiar. It's all in the education system. But Padmini says you have to go to the next step, dharana. Dharana is next step to concentration. What is happening in Chanchalata, there are multiple subjects, many, many thoughts, they are jumping from one subject to another. What did we do in concentration? We brought multiple subjects to a single subject. No, you don't allow your mind to jump into all subjects. Keep one subject. Now we are talking about Raj Yoga, Raj Yoga alone. One subject. But there are multiple thoughts. You know? The next process, that I say, is from multiple thoughts, go to a single thought. You have to fix the mind on a single thought. Desha bandaha chittasya dharana. Patanjali defined dharana as fixation of the mind on a single thought. And this is what we call focusing of the mind. A simple way to do that, you keep a candle flame and go on staring at it with the eyes open. Then close your eyes and remember and bring that picture of the candle flame in the mind. Don't allow the candle flame to go here and there continuously in the mind. This is called dharana. Dharana is to hold. Dhru iti dharana. No? It is to hold the mind in a single thought. If you start thinking about it, it becomes concentration. You just hold the picture. This is a new dimension that starts coming up. No? Why dharana? No? We know when you have a lens and you put the paper and just in the sunlight is going to burn. All the energy of the incident light is brought into a small focus. Therefore, that point becomes extremely powerful. So powerful that it can burn a paper. Similarly, here in the mind, when you remove all the thoughts and put all the energies of mind onto a single thought, that thought becomes very powerful. So powerful that it can go deep into your subconscious and can burn up all the wrong things that you have. You can use it suitably to remove your obsessions, blocks, phobias and several other things and we have done that so effectively. Dharana is therefore a very powerful technique. You know? And we have a further example of a laser, light amplification by stimulated electron radiation in which the light is made to go focused again and again through two parallel mirrors. Each time it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. You know? Goes on becoming so small an area, all the light becomes polarized and gets centered onto that small point. It becomes extremely powerful. It can ionize the atmosphere and it can cause fission reactions. And this is what our people were teaching earlier in our Gurukula system of education. You know? We all are aware of that famous example of Arjuna. You know? being a master in that Dhanur Vidya. The teacher once asked, let all my students come here and we'll have a test. For the test, he showed a big tree, a tall tree. Look there, what do you have? A small parrot he has kept. You know what you have to hit? Not just the parrot, not just the eye, not the eyeball, not the pupil. Center point of the pupil, of the eyeball, of the eye of the parrot, you have to hit. Come on, stand here and let's see how you hit. Finally, when Arjuna comes, he says, you say there is a tree, I don't see a tree. You say there is a parrot, I don't see the parrot. 
You say that the eye of the parrot of the things, I don't see any of these things. I see only that point which I have to hit, which you call as the center of the pupil, of the eyeball, of the eye of the parrot, which is on the tall tree, nothing I see, I see only that point. This is dharana. We have to put our mind into a single focus. Dharana, therefore, is to focus. And the next to dharana is dhyana. You can't do dharana for a long time. Just do 10 seconds intensive dharana, you start getting pain here. Patanjali says, therefore, you have to make the dharana effortless. Effortless dharana is called dhyana. And therefore, dhyana is a process of doing it in a very relaxed way. There should be a single thought in the mind, but it should be effortless and the slowness starts coming up. And as a result, you feel that you are very light. The five characters of meditation are dhyana, a single thought, effortlessness, slowness, wakefulness and expansiveness. If these characters are there, we call it as meditation, for that dharana. And japa is a simple way of doing dhyana. All the number of techniques of meditation are available and a simple japa can help us to take that. Any thought you can take and start doing it. And therefore, what we have done essentially is to move from the random mind towards the intellect and the memory and the ego. That ultimately should lead us to samadhi with Patanali talks called the super consciousness. From dharana to dhyana, dhyana to samadhi. What is that samadhi? Samyak adhiyate it is samadhi. You see, in all our transactions, we had threefold process. Now I am seeing you, the seer, the seen, and the process of seeing. You are eating your breakfast. You are there, the breakfast food is there, and you are eating. I am talking, person talking, the subject of talk, and the process of talking. Therefore, in all our transactions, there are threefold process called triputi. In meditation also, the meditator meditated and the process of meditation. Patanjali says, in samadhi, the three things merge together. The seer becomes one with the seen. That is called samadhi. Samyak adhiyate iti samadhi. Becoming one with the seen is samadhi. Tadeva arthamatra nirbhasa surupa shunyam eva samadhi. Says Patanjali, defining samadhi. It's a jump that happens inside. We are all familiar in the physical world about the quantum jump of electrons. What happens? The electrons are swimming around. Go on putting energy. It absorbs. And when it absorbs certain quantum energy, energy called H2, suddenly it jumps to the next orbit. You know? Something like that happens in the mind. When you go on meditating, you find that you jump from this consciousness to the higher level of consciousness. And jumping from one layer to the subtler layers of consciousness is called samadhi. And what characterizes samadhi, therefore, is immense bliss. Person going to samadhi you know, will be in great bliss. And there's a feeling of expansion and elation and lightness. And his knowledge base increases. And there's great power that happens. And there is unparalleled bliss of samadhi. Let me close down with an incident that happened in the life of Swami Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. You know, the teacher of Swami Vivekananda. And there was a person called Girish Babu in Bengal who was a great drunker, an addict of alcohol. And he would drink the whole day. Very rich man. Everybody knew Girish Babu as a very wonderful, soft gentleman. Very nice, very philanthropic. He would give to everybody. But the only defect was his drinking. Everybody said, oh, if you leave this, you are a man, a role model. But Giri said, why should I leave? That is the one that gives me all the enjoyment and the happiness. How can I leave this? Finally, somebody told, why don't you go out and meet Ramakrishna no? in Dakshineshwar? And he said, yes, certainly I will go. He starts coming there. When he reaches the shores of Dakshineshwar temple, then he finds a person with a daddy. The old man, he is coming there and he hears some songs, some bhajan, and then he is there. He is in that great bhava samadhi. And Girish looks at him, looks at him, looks at him. Ten minutes he is in that state. Then slowly he opens the eyes. You know what Girish asks? What brand? 
I tried all brands and what brand? I never got this amount of happiness in my life. What brand? What brand can you tell me? Prabhu Krishna is very humorous. God brand. <laughs> Would you like? Come, come to me. And in days he is transformed. This is Samadhi. Thank you very much. Few minutes for questions. No? Yes. Yeah, creativity is said to be the language of the heart. Mm. While critical approach, analytical in character is said to be the of the head. Then how does the mind come in here? The emotions, the feeling of the heart, intellect, the thinking. And in the thinking we have the buddhi or the intellect. Intellect is the controller of the mind. Mind is going like this, but you control the mind, that is by the discrimination power. From Manomai Kosha, you go to the Vignanamai Kosha. That Vignanamai Kosha is the intellect. Manomai Kosha is the mind. And the lower portion of the mind is the emotions. Sir, uh, can you just uh, uh, differentiate sleep from uh, the, the Samadhi? Sleep is the one in which you go unconscious. You are not aware of yourself. In Samadhi you are fully aware, but yet mind is silent. No? That's the main difference. Sir, I just want to clarify, sir. Can anybody at any age mm. start learning yoga because of the asanas and other things? Yeah, even asanas, I have the youngest student who came to me at the age of 93. He asked this question, I am 93 and can I do asanas? I said, where there is a will, there is a way. If you want, you can do that. And he said, I have plenty of time, you know, no problem. I said, go slow, gradually, systematically. After six months, he came to one of our camp. Everybody was looking at him. Fellow, 94 years old, he has come now. What asanas he can do? But once he started doing asanas, like the Saravanga asana, Shish asana, everybody was simply hypnotized. He said, hey, you must be practicing it from your childhood. No, sir, I started only nine months back. Nine months back? What is the secret? He opened his diary. You see, I had plenty of time, morning two and a half hours, evening two and a half hours, I go on practicing. So, no time bar. Is there any ideal duration for yoga? Because we've got so many asanas and so many types of, uh, you know, hmm. exercises which you, uh, yeah. uh, the thing advise. Hmm. Because uh, now that uh, we are, you know, robotic and we have got so many things in our hands. Yeah. So, do you have any uh, ideal, this thing which you Normally suggest? Normally we say or, uh, about half an hour, Good practice should be adequate for normal people. There are different streams of meditation, uh, doctor. Mm. How do we know that which is the best stream suited for us? This is um, the research that we are doing. What are the parameters by which we can say this meditation is better than this? One parameter we are trying to find out is probably the amount of rest your body mind gets by measuring the metabolic rate or the oxygen consumption. And we have been evaluating many different types of meditations by doing this. And also people who are in the process of development and there are masters in meditation. Ultimately when a person reaches the highest state of mastery in any meditation, he should be almost same with all the things. That is the whole conjecture.